Okay, so now let's do the calculation. Hopefully, when uh, we do this calculation, you will be able to understand better uh, the concept of at rest um, active and passive earth pressures that we discussed before. So, uh, if you have a book, this is example 13.1. Alright, so as you can see here, uh, this is a retaining wall. The total height is 4.5 meter. Okay, and this retaining wall is supporting this soil mass back here. Uh, so, you can see two layers, but both of them are sand, but with different um, unit weight. Okay, and you can see here as well, you have the groundwater table, okay, at Z uh, equals to 3 meter from the ground surface, so you'll see this water table, okay. So the properties are given, so the cohesion, friction angle, and unit weight of both layers. And then, uh, this, this is the information as well as... Um, the things that you have to do. Okay, given retaining wall is 4.5 meter and the wall is restrained from yielding. I'm going to highlight this. Okay, the wall is restrained from yielding. Okay, remember we have three conditions we have um, at rest earth pressure, active earth pressure, and passive earth pressure. If you see this in, in the question or in your task, the wall is restrained from yielding, which means the wall cannot move either to the left or to the right of its original position. So it will stay there. Okay, they did something to the wall and the wall will stay there. So this is the clue. Okay, so it means that you have to calculate for at rest uh, earth pressure. Okay, restrained from yielding. And what's the first thing that you have to do? Okay, you have to calculate the lateral force. Okay, I'm going to highlight using a different color. You have to calculate the lateral force uh, PO per unit length of the wall. Okay, and the second one is you have to determine the location of the resultant force. And also given, uh, you have to assume that the OCR for sand is 1.5. What is OCR? OCR is over consolidation ratio. Okay, you can read further in the in the textbook or you can Google. Alright. Alright, so let's do this. Um all right. so what we have to do first is this one. So for at Z equals to zero meter, okay, which means at here, okay, so basically at zero meter. So, what is the vertical effective stress, okay? So, we discussed before vertical effective stress equals to gamma h okay this is very straightforward but i'm going to show you anyhow so what is uh, our gamma for the first layer here so it is 15.7 okay and the h is zero so therefore your vertical effective stress equals to zero unit is kilonewton per meter square all right, you have to calculate that first. And then next is the one that we are interested in, which is the horizontal uh, effective stress. So this equals to K note uh, times vertical effective stress. So I know that this is going to be zero, okay? But I'm going to show you anyway. So how to calculate K note? Okay, K note, remember K note is the at rest earth pressure coefficient. So this equals to, if you look in the book, uh, 1 minus sine friction angle 
times O C R to the power of sine friction angle. Okay? And you have to look at the first layer. What is the friction angle at the first layer of sun? It is 35. So just plug it into the formula. Sorry, 1 minus sine 35 degree. So OCR is 1.5 sine 35 degree. Okay, so you do the maths. Therefore, K note, your K note is uh, 1 minus sine 35. Please bear with me. You can, you can calculate as well. Time 1.5 to the power of sine 35. So you will get uh, K note equals to 0 0.538. Okay, so this is rounded up to three decimal places. All right, so you proceed with the calculation. Therefore, vertical, sorry, horizontal effective stress equals to 0 0.538 multiply or times zero. Okay, this is the one that you calculated here. All right, and anyway, it is zero kilonewton per meter square. All right. And the next one, the third one, you have to also consider or to take into account the pore water pressure. So this is the symbol, okay, equals to gamma water times the height, okay. So before you proceed with this, you have to uh, look at this diagram. So as you can see here, um, the groundwater table, it is 3 meter uh, measured from the um, ground surface. So which means um, we assume that this, the first or the uh, top layer here is dry. Okay, if it is dry, then we don't have uh, the pore water pressure. Okay, so the pore water pressure here is zero. Found that. Okay, I'll, I'll speak in Malay. Dekat sini, kalau you nampak, groundwater table dekat sini. So, which means, layer yang bawah ni je, yang ada air, saturated with water. Okay, yang atas ni, we assume that the pore, dia punya rongga-rongga, uh, di antara partikel-partikel pasir tu, adalah kosong, which means dry. So, which means, uh, this layer, we don't have pore water uh, pressure acting on the wall. Tak ada air yang uh, menekan retaining wall dekat layer yang pertama ni. Alright, so that's why the pore water pressure here is zero. The unit is also kilonewton per meter square. Alright, so that's the first one. Okay, as that equals to zero. Now you proceed with um, the next uh, depth. So at z equals to, sorry you cannot say, z equals to, okay this is z equals to 0, so the second layer is z equals to 3, okay, so you have to do the same thing, z equals to um, 3 meter, okay, so you do the same, uh, vertical effective stress equals to gamma h, so what is the unit weight of this layer so it is still uh, the same 15.7 and the height is 3 meter so therefore your vertical effective stress equals to Sorry. Fifteen point seven times three, so it is equals to uh, forty-seven point one kilonewton per meter square, and then you proceed with uh, horizontal 
effective stress. So this equals to K naught times uh, vertical effective stress, the one that you calculated just now. So K naught is 0 0.5. Three eight sorry zero point five three eight multiply by this one forty seven point one okay and then equals to okay twenty five point three four kilonewton per meter square so this is your horizontal effective stress at z equals to three. And the next one you proceed with um, pore water pressure. So again, you have to think at z equals to three, which is okay. I'm gonna draw where I'm gonna draw. Okay, I'm gonna draw here. Okay, you can see. Okay, this is this is zoom in. Okay, so this is the first layer at z equals to three meter. So basically, this is your uh, groundwater table. So at this layer. Okay, just uh, exactly above the groundwater table. Okay, do you think you have uh, pore water pressing on your wall here? Okay, so no pressure, isn't it? No pressure from water. Okay, because the water is down here, so this is saturated. Saturated is down here uh, below the groundwater table. So we assume the one above the groundwater table to be dry. So this, uh, that's why the pore water pressure at z equals to 3 is still equals to 0 kN per meter square okay since we assume this uh, top layer to be dry so no pore water pressure okay so that's why it is still uh, 0 kN per meter square all right and then let's proceed with the next step at Z equals to 4.5 meter okay so which means here so we have Z equals to 0 Z equals to uh, 3 and then last one Z equals to 4.5 equals to the total uh, height of the retaining wall okay here vertical effective stress equals to anything from the top okay anything the soil needs to bear from the top so you you already have 47.1 kilonewton per meter square isn't it so 47.1 so the one that you calculated earlier so you have to add the one down here okay 47.1 47.1 is coming from this layer okay this layer this is 47.1 so it is also this layer is also supporting the stress from this layer so now you have to calculate this one okay so 47.1 plus gamma h okay 47.1 plus okay now this is a bit um, tricky and uh, is important okay so for for the effective stress if you notice we have this thing uh, vertical effective stress see you have this uh, sign here and then you have also horizontal effective this is effective so this means the stresses comes come only from the soil okay water is not included for water we will calculate it separately okay so this comes from soil only this is contributed by soil this is only tanah sahaja okay that's why for here uh, the given unit weight is 19.2 isn't it so you have to rem remember 19.2 is saturated okay so in order to get rid of the water so you have to take away the unit weight of water okay so 19.2 what is the unit weight of water it is 
9.81 isn't it okay and the height so what is the height uh, the height uh, for this second layer so it is 1.5 so 1.5 all right so you do the maths therefore the vertical effective stress equals to okay please bear with me 19.2 take away 9.81 times 1.5 plus 47.1 so it's 61.19 kilonewton per meter square all right and then just like what we did before okay i'm gonna go a bit faster so we proceed with a uh, horizontal effective stress equals to k note times the uh, vertical effective stress. So k note is 0 0.538 times the one that we calculated just now, which is this one, 61.19. So the answer is 0 0.538 times 60. 1.19 so this is <coughs> excuse me 32.92 kilonewton per meter square and then we proceed with the pore water pressure so the formula is gamma water times the height okay so gamma water is can you see this properly? Sorry. Okay. So 9.81 gamma water, the height is the height um not not 4.5, okay? <clears throat> 4.5 is the total height. So the height with water, okay? It is 1.5. It is this one, okay? So 1.5. Therefore, the pore water pressure is 9.81 times 1.5. It is equal to 14.72 kilonewton per meter square. Okay, and now you're done. But um, I suggest for you to transfer all these values into table because it is easier for your next step. Okay. So now let's transfer these values into table. So what you have to do is do your table. Okay, do a simple table. Okay, so this is your Z. Please <coughs> remember to put the units, okay? This is engineering, so unit is very important for us. Okay, Z, and then this is your uh, vertical effective stress unit is kilonewton per meter square and then this is your horizontal effective stress okay I'm gonna do this quickly because this is straightforward and then this is your pore water pressure sorry kilonewton per meter square okay all right so you have three deaths just now isn't it all right, so you have 0, 3, and 4.5. So you just copy everything in here. So I'm going to do it now. Okay, at 0, z equals to 0, everything is 0. Okay. And then at z equals to 3, this is 47.1. This is 25.34. This is 0. And at is that equals to 4.5 this is 61.19 this is 32.92 and this is 14.72 all right so you just copy the values that you calculated earlier in this table so it's easier for you to proceed with uh, the next step we're not done yet okay so remember we have to find Look at the first one, the first task, uh, lateral force per unit length of the wall. So you have to find the force acting on the wall. So from here, 
you have to um, do this graph okay okay so this is the uh, remember we are interested in lateral lateral means horizontal okay the forces which come from sideways so for to plot your graph you are only interested in this column and this column okay horizontal effective stress and the pore water pressure so you have to do this um, axis here so this is horizontal effective stress unit is kilonewton per meter uh, square this is for the x-axis and for the y-axis this is z okay the depth remember all right and do one more for the pore water pressure okay so this is pore water pressure all right and then this is z, the same thing z in meter and then um, yeah just complete the graph so let's say this is three meter isn't it so you have zero you have three and then you also have 4.5 okay try to make these two uh, graphs align so this is zero three four point five so now just draw your your graph okay so for horizontal uh, at z equals to zero so it is also zero and then this is not so scale okay so you just have to um, approximate the location uh, of each point so at z equals to three uh, horizontal effective stress is 25.34 and at 4.5 it is maybe about there so it's 32.92 okay so you have to do what you have to do is just join the dots okay it's better if you can use ruler okay I'm sorry I don't have ruler around here so join the dots and do the same for pore water pressure so you have 0 and 0 and at 4.5 it is 14 Point seven two, so join the graph. Okay, I mean join the the dots. All right. So wait, what we have to do now actually? Okay, so we have to calculate the PO. Remember, so the lateral force. Lateral force. Okay. So how to do this? Okay, it is basically simple. It is actually. Uh, equals to the area under the graph okay in order to calculate the lateral force you have to calculate the area under the graph so I'm going to divide this graph into uh, simpler um, shapes into basic shapes so I'm going to number this one two three okay and then this is four okay it doesn't matter okay you can number this one two three or one two three no no issue with that okay so uh, now so let's do the uh, I mean let's calculate the area so PO equals to area one plus area two plus area three plus area four okay so area one is this is um, triangle isn't it so triangle is half times the width at the bottom which is 25.34 times the height three okay you look at the this this graph here okay plus area two is basically a rectangle so the length and the width isn't it so 25.34 times I mean the height so it's 1.5 okay area 3 is another triangle so half times okay so what's the the width here okay calculate the width which is 32.92 minus 
25.34 this is 7.58 times the height 1.5 okay plus okay this one another triangle half times 14.72 times 1.5 okay so okay just bear with me i'm going to calculate times 25.34 times 3 if you do this this equals to 38.01 plus this is also 38.01 Okay, and then this is 5.69 and this is 11.04. Okay, so you do one by one, okay, which equals to this. Okay, so in order to calculate the PO, therefore, PO equals to Okay, PO equals to 92.75 kilonewton per meter. So this is your answer for the first task, okay, which is this one. Just now remember, calculate the lateral force PO or P note per unit length of the wall. So basically this is your P note. Okay, 92.75, which means this is your retaining wall just now, okay? And this is the force, the resultant force that is acting on your retaining wall. But the question now is where? Where? The location? Is it here? 92.75? Is it there? Is it there? Okay. So that's what we are going to do for the next step, okay? For the next... Um, task we have to calculate the location of the resultant force okay set in meter okay so how to uh, calculate the location of the resultant force so basically we have to calculate the the moment okay um, so now this is our um, resultant force 